I'm sorry. So whenever you're ready, buddy. So I was originally diagnosed with kidney cancer. I had a tumor on my kidney, and it was greatly advanced. So I had a nephrectomy. Um, they took my renal gland out and my um, spleen, and they thought they got it all. Three months later, I they diagnosed it as uh, metastasizing to my lungs. Um, tell, you can go closer if you want. tell us a little bit about how you came to your treatment. That's, how that's you great. came to meet your doctor and what treatment you were on. I went to several hospitals trying to find a cure to combat this, and um, I don't know if you want to know this part. Um, I went to one prestigious hospital in the city, and they gave me literally months to live, um, and I wouldn't buy that. So uh, I went to a few other hospitals. Um, one wanted to do some kind of um, experimental procedures, and I didn't want to do that. I met up with Dr. Dutcher. My brother found her online somehow and uh, took a liking to her, um, trusted her, and went with her diagnosis and what uh, she um, suggested, which was IL-2. Can you tell us a little bit about the treatment process? So we were, you know, how, how do you take IL-2 in the hospital? So the process of taking IL-2 We'd go into the hospital for a week at a time. Um, the first week, the first morning, they give you a uh, IV, I guess, and uh, you get three treatments a day, every eight hours. It's a drip, and you get sicker and sicker gradually throughout the week to the point where Friday you're at death's door almost. Um, you're vomiting, you have diarrhea, you have the chills, fever, um, my blood pressure would drop to where I would practically black out. Um, and I had, I, I um, got a bad skin rash, which I would have to take oatmeal baths for. So anyway, you would do that for a week, you'd go home, take a week off, and you would feel much better, and you'd go back and do another week. And when you start up again that first drip on Monday, you're right back to where you were two weeks ago on Friday. So it's like having the flu, they say, a hundred times over, but I wouldn't compare it to that. I can't compare it. Um, it's been 14 years that I'm cancer free, um, and I try to block it out of my mind, and I can't really remember that it was as bad as it was, but it was, it was tough. But I still feel like I cheated um, not only death, but all cancer survivors, especially those who go through chemo and stuff, because I didn't, I didn't feel that, you know, I didn't lose my hair, I didn't lose a lot of weight, and it was just that week of, of suffering, I guess. Um, how long after taking IL-2 did you, did your doctor know that it was working? Hmm, from what I can remember, about three months now, maybe maybe a, a few weeks. You'd have to talk to my doctor. I can't really recall. I think it may be four to several weeks. I got another CAT scan, and she could see that the nodules in my chest were going down. And then I think uh, three months at a time, I'd get CAT scans. And within a year, I think, I was told that I was cancer-free. And it never recurred. Knock on wood. <laughs> That was it was uh, three to four weeks, several weeks after um, my one cycle of interleukin-2, which consisted of the first week was three days because I couldn't take the high-dose IL-2. So they sent me home. I came back a week later, took a full week of the low dose, which I couldn't take at all because I was getting such reactions. And then I went home for a week and came back. So that was my cycle. It was about two and a half weeks within a month. And uh, after several weeks, um, she, she, we had a CAT scan, and the results showed that my nodules had been going, getting smaller. And then within a year, cancer-free, knock on wood. Perfect, yes. That's exactly that was great. Yeah. Okay, um, I do have one more question. I just want to know um, if you could... 
you know, I know the, the side effects are bad, and you could tell us just a little, bit, a little bit about the side effects, and then if you could also say a little bit about how um, the staff managed the side effects. Okay. Like they, um, the side effects on that IL-2 consist of uh, low blood, blood pressure, and mine would drop considerably. They have a medicine for that, but they would give it to me after the first couple of days after I passed out. Um, gradually, I, luckily, I know my body and can feel what's going on. And uh, I would ask for that medicine when I could feel my blood pressure going down. So they would give it to me earlier and then I wouldn't black out. Um, I told you before, I think you get the chills. I mean frigid, where you're freezing and you're sweating. So you're covering up and I mean shaking. And then you're, you're taking everything off because you're sweating. Um, diarrhea, gas, um, weak and tired. And the worst part for me was uh, I would get a skin rash. I would be itching all over. And that continued for six months to a year after I took it, which I, I took as a sign that it was in me working. So, um, But that was the hardest was the rash because I... If someone would touch me, it would make my skin react. So I would take oatmeal baths. Um, the um, nursing staff at the hospital were fantastic. They would just, uh, you know, monitor me, and if I needed anything, they they were there. Um, it's been, like I said, 14 years. I can't remember details, um, but I had that button, and I would press it, and they would come running in and take care of me. So. But the main thing was the, the blood pressure going down and, and the diarrhea and, again, the chills. Excellent. Um, we got to wrap up, so just one last question. Um, can you just tell us, you know, why an event like this is important for other patients and what it means for you in these events? You can be a little bit closer, John. Can be how, do I, how do I repeat that? So say, you know, events like um, okay. patient education okay. events okay. are important for us. Uh, patient events like this are important, I'm sure, f mostly for those who are suffering from it now. Um, I just came back today for the first time in 14 years um, to talk to uh, in a setting like this, actually to repay my doctor. Um, there's not enough money in the world to repay her.